Former President Barack Obama is backing dozens of candidates ahead of the 2018 midterm elections. He released a list of 81 candidates he's endorsing. Those on the list are running for everything from state auditors to governor. Several of those endorsed served in the Obama administration. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe in Washington. All right, Ed, so lay it out for us here. What is noteworthy about the candidates President Obama did endorse on this list and those he did not endorse? Sure. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a long list of short bets and long shots uh, stretching all across the country uh, with some notable omissions and, and notable inclusions. Uh, you've got 81 candidates, 48 of them are women. More than 20 are minorities, uh, and they're running for everything from governor of California to Iowa's uh, agriculture secretary to state house and senate races in places like Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Colorado. Uh, according to aides who worked with him on this, he's been fielding requests from Democrats all across the country. This uh, a first indication that he is eager and, and quite uh, and quite willing to endorse in, in all sorts of races, not just the ones that are getting the most attention across the country. And notable omissions you mentioned. Yeah, but what we were told today is that this is just the first wave. That in mm. fact they're they're looking at so many more that they felt the need to sort of get this batch out the door, and, and that there will be others later on. One notable thing, if you look at this list, none of these people are incumbents. Uh, none of them are Democrats, uh, sort of Democratic senators running in red states. Mm. Uh, these are mostly first-time candidates or, or challengers to Republican incumbents. Uh, and, and one of the other common strands, of course, is that so many of them actually worked in the Obama administration. Yeah, and, and on that, um, what do we know about those uh, former Obama administration officials? Uh, it's, it's everyone from Richard Cordray, the former head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, who's running for governor of Ohio, to a guy named Colin Allred, uh, who's running for a Dallas area congressional seat. He used to work at HUD alongside former Secretary Castro. Uh, there's people like Amar Kampanajar. He's a Latino Arab guy running against the Republican Congressman Duncan Hunter out in California. Uh, Kampanajar used to work at the Labor Department. Uh, and, and even a guy named uh, Tim Gannon, who spent eight years at the Agriculture Department alongside Secretary Tom Vilsack and is now home in Iowa running for Secretary of Agriculture. So what, what the statement from the former president said is, you know, if you remember what I told you all in my farewell address to the country in late 2016, that if you want to get involved, pick up a clipboard, go get signatures and actually put your own name on the ballot. He says these 20 and any others that he's endorsed uh, are examples of people doing just that. Well, the former president also endorsed candidates in state level campaigns. Why the attention to those races? You're seeing a lot of attention this year, uh, Elaine, among Democratic Party elders, especially, uh, or those with big pocketbooks, focused on state races. There's big concern that after uh, big losses over the last decade or so across the country, the party really does need to rebuild at the state level. So you see him endorsing uh, several state House and state Senate candidates in places like North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Colorado, and Iowa. These are state legislatures that Democrats hope to be able to retake this year. And Democrats want to be doing that ahead of the 2020 census so that they're in better position to help redraw congressional and legislative maps. The other reason, uh, and if you look at some of the backstories of these candidates, is that the party really does really need to rebuild its bench. Several of these people are younger, in their 30s, maybe early 40s. A lot of them are women, uh, all of them seen as potential rising stars who could potentially run for higher office down the line. Well, what is President Obama's role shaping up to be in the 2018 midterms? Well, uh, for one thing, he's doing this. By, by merely releasing a list like this, this potentially gives a big boost to some of these candidates, especially those down-ballot folks who maybe weren't getting as much attention at the local level, uh, but now are sort of signaled as people that are deserving of support from other Democrats across the country. His statement today said he does plan to campaign across the country for these and other Democrats. Uh, and uh, from, from the looks of the initial response from some of these candidates, at least, they are eager and willing to do that. So we could see the former president campaigning everywhere from Atlanta to Des Moines, out to California, back to suburban Philadelphia, maybe even down in Texas, depending on the areas uh, that, uh, and whether or not it makes sense to bring him in. But this will be a real test of his enduring popularity and whether Democrats want to be associated with the Obama legacy or are instead perhaps looking forward and looking beyond what he did for eight years. All right, Ed O'Keefe in our Washington newsroom. Ed, thank you. Take care.